All right, this video is on the single most difficult concept that a middle school math student ever encounters, subtracting integers. These little baby single digit numbers are actually silent killers. They're like poison ivy. Um, you know, you can't really feel their pain until well after it's done, and they look so innocent. Look at them, small numbers. It's like, oh, those are my comfort. They're like teddy bears, but they're not. They're teddy bears with teeth. So five minus two. I want to start with that one because I think it's the foundation for everything else. So uh, we, we start over here at five on the number line. And I think by now, as a middle school student, you know if you're subtracting, that means you're moving backwards. So I'd move backwards two, and you get the idea. Five minus two is three. I'm probably not telling you something you didn't know yet. But I'm setting that up to, to show you on this one right here. Negative two minus one. Your first instinct, just shout it out. What is it? Did you say negative one? Did you say one? Those are both wrong assumptions. So if I start over here at negative two, I'm taking one. Just like up here when I was taking two, I moved to the left. If I'm taking one, I move to the left. So this will actually equal negative three. And the way that um, I like to teach it, because eventually students are going to start to memorize the idea here, but I say add the opposite and a lot of other math teachers do as well. So I would take that negative 2 and I'm going to add instead of subtract. And the opposite of 1 is negative 1. Because I think that addition is pretty counterintuitive. Negative 2 plus negative 1 will equal negative 3. If I owe you $2, you owe, or I'm sorry, I owe you $2 and I owe someone else a dollar. I owe $3. Um, that, that makes sense. That's logical. But this idea of negative 2 minus 1 you're used to seeing two in, in subtraction of one and thinking the answer is one because that's what you've done for most of your, your life. Um, right here, four minus negative two. If I use that same principle of four, add the opposite, well, that becomes four plus two, so this is six. Um, think of it this way. You start with four dollars and then someone who you owe two dollars to, right, because you're subtracting the two dollars, they say, you don't have to pay it anymore. So they subtract away a negative. So that's positive six. Um, let me see if I can go back up here. I had another one that I wanted to go through. Ah, negative eight minus negative three. So we start with negative eight, and we're taking negative three. So again, I don't owe you that three dollars anymore. That must mean I only owe five dollars now. But if we just go with our standard add, the opposite, well, negative 8 plus 3. There's more negatives than positives. But 3 of those positives are going to kill off 3 of those negatives. So you're left with negative 5. Right here, 7 minus negative 7. Again, your, your quick brain says the answer is 0, but you're taking a negative. So it's 7 plus 7, and then it becomes 14. And then finally right here, what I always see students do is they just default to, oh, I'm going to add the opposite. And that's fine. But it's 6 minus 4. Again, you already know what 6 minus 4 is. So this will just be, let me put parentheses around this just so you see the notation. But this will be 2, and you should probably do that without even thinking. You can do that with your hands tied behind your back. 